Hello and welcome to Soft Vision. My name is Stephen Berry. Many of you already know Soft Vision from our Soft Vision learning videos, and a lot of you are actually using them right now. Today, however, I have with me Lars. Welcome. Thank you very much, Stephen. Now, Lars, you run your own business, that's correct? That, that's right. And you, um, am I safe in saying that you actually use quite a number of different software products in that business? Well, like most modern companies nowadays, we, we made a fair investment in computer software, that's true. Would you say it was a fairly substantial investment? I think so. What I'd like to uh, show you in this video is how SoftVision can actually help you and your company to increase uh, its productivity and maximize the investment you've made in that software. Okay. I can see though that you're not going to take my word for it, so I'd like to introduce you to somebody. We've got Bill Gates, Chairman of Microsoft. Let's have a look. Hello. I'm Bill Gates, Chairman of Microsoft. In this video, you're going to see the future, Windows. Microsoft first came up with the Windows concept back in 1983. And today, the leading software users have switched into the Windows environment. It's really incredible how quickly our powerful applications like Word and Excel and PowerPoint have been adopted. It's not just Microsoft applications. Even companies like WordPerfect and Lotus have now come out with Windows applications. And every week, we see new innovative work. It's really attracting all the innovation in the industry. We predicted this a long time ago, and now it, it's the future. Let's take a look. And uh, as you can see, just like the program manager before it, uh, it comes in in its own window, and at the top of the screen, the title bar is telling us that it's the file manager. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the directory that we're currently looking at is the Windows directory. Right. You can see that up there in the title bar. Uh, you've, of course, got your menus here, which can be accessed again, pointing and clicking. Same drop-down menus, drop -down right. Menus. You've right. got a control menu right at the top. I uh, forgot to mention that a moment ago. But if you click on that, you can see that you've got uh, options for actually... Closing the file manager itself. Closing the file manager, dealing with the file manager window mm -hmm. itself. Can you put your icon in here? Yes. I'm going to put uh, oh, the calculator. Marvelous. Let's put the calculator in and we can test this. Let's click on calculator. Just drag it in. Or calendar, calendar even. Calendar even. <laughs> well, let's put the calculator in while we're on the subject. <laughs> Notice I'm holding down the control key when I do this because I don't want to remove the original. I'd like to still have a pointer to these applications right, from the accessories group because by habit I know that I go into the accessories group to access these. Right. But this is just for startup purposes. And if I wanted to have write running or any of the exe files, I could have them in the startup group. Right. Okay. Um, when they actually start up mm -hmm. um, in Windows, do they take up the full screen um, or? Can you have them running sort of minimised in you a minimised state? You can, you can have them running minimised. Let me show you a way that you can do that. Uh, we'll be coming to this in more detail later on. But if I click on the calendar, for example, and go to the file menu and choose properties, I'm asking for the properties of this particular icon or this particular yes, application. Uh -huh. And if we have a close look at the window here, uh, we can see that uh, one of the options that we have is run minimised. If I check this option, and why don't we check this option so that we can yes. see what happens, uh -huh. I'll check that option and choose OK. So I've changed the properties of calendar. It means it's going to run as an icon instead of full screen right. when I start Windows. Right, that's really useful. Calculator, well, I'll leave it to run uh, in its own window when it okay. comes up. That'll be fine. And we would do that by going to the Options menu, and you can see that we have an uh -huh. option here, right. Change System Settings. Mm -hmm. And you know that uh, in Windows, the three little dots, the ellipse there, after a menu item indicates that a dialog box is about to appear. Let's click on that, and there you are. Proof's in the pudding. <laughs> And let's just drag down our change I system see. settings. And it's showing us, again, it's showing us what our current setup is. If you decide... Okay, so let's go back in. And the one I want to show you, really, which you can do quite a lot with, is called Marquee. So let's click on screen Marquee. again. Marquee. Okay. And this is one that enables us to actually put in our own text so that we can have our own text flashing across the screen. Really? So let's go into Setup. And here it comes now. It's currently... It says Windows 3.1. Uh-huh. And it oh, says that because like fun. the default text is Windows 3.1 in here. So I'm going to put in here, um, I've gone sailing. <laughs> OK. And we can actually format the text now so that it appears in the uh, size and style that we want. So click on Format Text. And uh -huh. look at this. We can actually access the true type fonts for this text. Wow. So I'm going for t Times New Roman. Of course. Bold. It's my favorite. Uh, let's go for a 28-point size. And I'm going to... Well, how, how long is, is that video for? Uh, that one's two and a half to three hours in length. In fact, all of the Soft Vision videos are three hour, up to three hours in length. Three hours? Yeah. That, that's very long, isn't it? Yes, it is very long. Right. Let, let me ask you a question, Lars. Tell me, what spreadsheets are you actually using in your business? Uh, well, I, I actually use an old version uh, of um, 
Uh, it's called 123. Lotus 123. That, that's right. That's great software. There's so many versions of it. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm certainly pleased with it, yeah. In fact, let me, let me tell you something. We've got, uh, got the expert from Lotus who came up to the studio, Alan Baldwin. Mm -hmm. He travels around the country showing the corporates how to, how to use 123. Would you mm -hmm. like to see that? Okay. Got it here. Let's have a yeah. look. I was a user of 123 as a customer right. of Lotus. And for the last two years, I've been working for Lotus in the UK right. and specialising in 123. What, what sort of things do you do at Lotus, Alan? I work with all the versions of 123 mm -hmm. with customers, with corporate customers, yeah. and work on versions of 123 which span the calculator versions of 123 through the DOS versions on the PC through to mainframe versions of yeah. 123. Seems virtually any sort of computer you get these days, regardless of what operating system it has, is, mm -hmm. seems that there's a version of 123 available for it. That's right. We feel in the world, we think we've got um, something like 18, 19 million users of yeah. 123. It's, it's a, quite it's staggering. A, it's a, it is a staggering number and it, it's a great opportunity for the Soft Vision viewers, uh, having, having you here today, having an expert who's going to take you through these features and give you expert guidance in how to use them. And as you say, there's so many different versions of uh, mm -hmm. 123. We're going to be looking at two different versions today for DOS on this video. That's right. We'll be looking at release 2.4 for DOS and release 3.1 plus right. for DOS. And during the video, we'll cover both of those versions and we'll highlight any differences between them. And we'll also talk about which might be the best one for you to choose for your, your computer. And really it comes down to the type of hardware that people are using? Very much so, yeah. That's really the decision that needs to be made. Yeah. And, and you're going to tell us how to do that a little bit later on? And we'll talk a little bit around that later on, yeah. Brilliant. Well, I'm really keen to, to get on and have a look at 123. Um, it, it's a great opportunity having you here. One thing we just mentioned, though, that uh, as is typical with all soft vision learning videos, don't consider this as a feature film. Don't watch mm -hmm. the film from start to finish. Simply determine what section you'd like to look at. You can have a look at the index on the back cover. Mm -hmm. Go straight to the chapter you want to learn about and, and do it in a relaxed environment. Grab a cup of coffee, sit in the lounge room <laughs> and go through the topic you want to look at. That's the best way to learn. So I think without further ado we should get on and have a look. I'm pretty keen. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Great. Let's have a look. And if we wanted to, to do some work with files, you can yeah. see that on the, on the first row of those two, mm -hmm. we have a file uh, option. I can move along to the word file, right. OK, yes. and choose file by hitting the Enter key. Enter again. Yeah, so enter nice, again. Nice and consistent. That's right. And we now go into the set of options that go with file, so we can retrieve files. So we just choose a worksheet, yeah. and under global settings, we have the option called group mode, OK? Mm -hmm. So if I choose group, yes. And say OK. If we look at the bottom of the screen on the status line, you can see there's this little indicator group, which yeah. just indicates that I've got group mode switched sure. on. But what happens is on the full screen, if I, if I, what's happened is all the sheets have come into line. Oh, I see. So wherever my cursor is, all the other sheets assume the formatting. It's picked up the formatting where the cursor from where is. I was. Right, absolutely. And if I widen the column, it winds it on all of them. So if the cursor had been in the middle uh, sheet, for example, in a, in a column, it would yep. have applied the dimensions for that cell across all the others. Across all the others, that's right. absolutely right. Let's put that one back. Let's just make the, just do it with fonts as well. Let's take the title, mm -hmm. highlight the range, yep. go to style, choose font. Let's choose a bigger font, a 24 point font, mm -hmm. 24, say OK. And there's a big one. And, and so I only change it here, but it changes it all the way through. So these are, these are linked in some way? These are linked, these are kind of... How about that? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I do recognise uh, 1, 2, 3. It's, it's not the same version I have, though. Well, it's really the Lotus concept to make it easy for people to upgrade from earlier versions, and it's, it's painless. It looks, mm. it looks very much the same, and across yeah. uh, different platforms, different operating environments. Yeah. Tell me, let me, let me ask you another question. What, what uh, word processor is your secretary using? Uh, well, she's using, I'm, I'm not quite sure which, which uh, package it is, but, but it's, it's a word processing package that right. we have. Do you, do you think she's getting the most out of the software? Oh, well, she's doing uh, my correspondence and, and uh, my uh, letters, so... Uh, right. So, do you still use uh, typewriters in your, in your business? Uh, no. Look, 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 modern word process processors have so much in them now, and there's so much you can actually do in-house. In fact, I'd like to show you an example. Let's have a look at this. Okay. Um, news, pick up this view, for example, just move it up a little bit, yep. and I can double click on my graphics. You can see graphics as well? In that's this. right. I can view. Oh, that's my car. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was my car. <laughs> yes. keep, work, keep working, yeah. you'll get there. I can see all these graphics. Now, incidentally, all these graphics actually come with WordPerfect for Windows. Oh, do they? So you can use them straight away in there. There's a little bookworm <laughs> there. I like that. 
but some kind of fun graphics and useful right. graphics as well that you could use right. within WordPerfect. And you can see we can view them, we can size this window if you wanted to see much more of mm -hmm. that. And we can just click through Great. and view those. Okay. We'll have and a, these we'll, are all standard? These are all standard. We even have our own clip art libraries available and figure right. libraries if you okay. wanted additional ones. Right. Okay. So we can click through and view those. Great. That's, just That's a very useful feature. Mm -hmm. Can we? One thing I, I didn't ask you when we were saving the document is actually mm -hmm. specifying the different drives. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that an easy thing to do? Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's just turn off the viewer. Just double click on the control menu. The menu. Now, obviously, the quick list here can be made to point to different drives. Right. So, if we just have a quick look at that again, right. edit, and edit this one. This one is pointing to A colon backslash, for right. example, the A drive. But it could point to F. It could point yep. to G if you're on a network. Right. Or alternatively. We can turn off the quick list, yep. and we can just move to our drives by double-clicking. Right. Now, and this applies to opening or saving. That's actually, right. Exactly actually, the right. same. And you can see that we can just double-click on this double dot here, right. and it'll take us up a directory okay. level. So there's a lot of consistency between saving the document and opening the document. That's right. But we'll be looking at graphics, for example, later. You'll see how the same dialog box appears and how we can yeah. do even more things and viewing more different graphics. Okay. I'll just cancel out of that one. Well, that's uh, that's very impressive. I think um, when you obviously when you're in a large corporate, mm -hmm. the ability to transfer files between different not only different applications but different versions of the same product is uh, very important. That's very important. For example, WordPerfect 5.1 for DOS and WordPerfect 5.1 for Windows, the file format is exactly the same. Really? So there's actually no difference in the document's architecture. So it'll look exactly the same on both of those setups. Yeah, that's probably very important for people mm -hmm. to maximize. They obviously made a lot of documents in the, the DOS version and wanted to bring them across to Windows. That's why we thought that would be very important with WordPerfect. Yeah. So, but, but also, other platforms, we also have 5.1 available for VMS. But something WordPerfect can do, something also quite special, is that it can save the document for you at specified intervals. What, automatically? Automatically. OK, we'll just have a quick look at that option. Sure. If I press Shift F1, Right. We actually go into the setup menu item, uh -huh. and we'll take the option number three for environment. Right. And you'll see number one there at the top, backup, backup options. options. Now this is going to be pretty important. This one mm -hmm. for for uh, people in corporates and network operators. Exactly. So let's just press number one. And now here we have an explanation of what's happening. Um, the first option is backup directory, where you can specify where that saved file will be placed. Right. And the next one is time document backup. I've got it set to yes. So that means if the feature is on. That's right. And min minutes between backups. How often will I make will work perfect? Well, I mean, I suppose it, it is, I must admit, it's quite interesting. But um, I think in, in many cases, and particularly I would say it's true for our company, that, that you don't really have the time to uh, change the role of, of, of the secretary. Well, on the contrary, I think that a lot more secretaries now do have the time, and they now have the tools to, to sit down and to, um, to create this professional quality output very quickly and very easily. Mm. Let me ask you, how do you actually create your, um, your advertising, your newsletters? We do a fair few of those, but we use an outside agency for, for production. Right. You, you've probably heard of the desktop publishing revolution. You know that a lot of people are actually now are using their, their PCs to, to create professional-looking work. Our agency is, is using... Uh, desktop publishing, so I understand about the concept. Yeah, a lot of secretaries are using it now. You've probably heard of Paul Brainard. He's the he's the chairman of Aldous uh, Corporation. In fact, he started the whole desktop publishing revolution in the 80s. We've right. got him. He came to the studio. I want to show you this. Have a look. Have a look at this. Hello, I'm Paul Brainard, president of Aldous Corporation. Today, we're going to show you PageMaker. PageMaker was the application that started a revolution in publishing. In 1984, I created the concept desktop publishing using a microcomputer, a desktop laser printer, and the software PageMaker. And now you can see that I've got my text flowing around the picture each time I let go of the mouse handle. It's reflowing mm. the text for me. I can stop that reflow happening until I finish by holding the space bar down. That's a useful tip if you're doing this irregular text track. Just hold the space bar down. As you're doing it. As you're doing it, and it'll stop the, the text reflowing. Gosh. I've never seen anything like this before. Uh. You can trim away areas on the outside of the, the photograph that right. you don't want. Like, I don't really want all that black space around him. Yeah. I just want his face. And <laughs> I, if I move into you, want, you want that face? <laughs> if you move into the middle of the picture and hold the mouse key down, you get this little hand. Gosh. And then oh. you can move it around within the <laughs> masked frame there. 
I've been trying to get him to wink, but he won't wink Sit for still, me. Sit still, Mr. <laughs> so that's it. I've got my photograph there, and I'm that's happy with that. brilliant. With that, that control you have there, that's amazing. That's great. Let's just size it up a bit. And, whoops, I've zoomed out, so let's move across here. What I'm going to do now, I want this photograph to appear three times on my page, so I'll just size <laughs> it down brave. a little bit, and I'm going to copy it. So edit copy. Edit copy, right. and paste it back. Right. Okay, I'm just going to move that down here a little bit, and paste it back again. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then if I move, whoops, let's get that looking good. If I move to this middle picture and zoom in, I'm going to show you now how we use the edit control. You'd actually, you, I just noticed you just zoomed in on that picture using the keyboard shortcut. Just yeah, like I just use control 2, okay. and it's taken me into 200% straight into it. Yes. And let's just drop this down on here. Mm. Now, when we selected preferences mm -hmm. originally, we selected to display our graphics at wow. high resolution. So if I just zoom in, that's a nice garden, that, isn't it? It's a great <laughs> garden. Let's just zoom in and see the, the sort of quality of that picture. Uh, I can move the toolbox, etc., out of the way so that yeah. we can you can see it. But obviously, it takes a little while to refresh the screen well, when yeah, you're displaying at high resolution. It's doing an awful lot of work. That's resolution. right. So what we could do is go back into preferences, just while we're manipulating the picture, mm -hmm. and turn off the high resolution to help us with the screen representation. Right. So we need to come into preferences here and just uncheck high resolution TIFF display. So now it will give us a, oh, a quicker, what it? we call a quick and dirty screen quick representation screen. of the picture. But it's much quicker way of working it's with much the quicker of, of working it until we've finished doing what we want to do with it. Okay. Right. So let's zoom out again and just select the picture. So let's use the sliding bar here. Ooh, move down and, and you can see and it says pan. And you can see my pantone. pantone shade. Well it actually if we expand this color palette mm -hmm. it'll give you the pantone shade and number. Oops, mm -hmm. let's move down to the bottom again. See that? Okay. So there's my pantone 150. Very good. And that's a spot colour at the moment. You can tell that because it's solid type, but yes. we could very easily go back in and change that to a, to a process colour. Great. Well, you've really shown us in that chapter yeah. just how easy it is to work with, work with colours. And uh, I'm, I'm really dying to get out there and start creating uh, newsletters and advertisements and so on. Mm -hmm. And I can see how something like this is going to save organisations so much money, not having to send it out to be printed. Well, it certainly does that. And uh, I say one of the major, major benefits is keeping the control of your illustration in-house, you're not having to rely on third parties mm. to do these complex things for you. Well, that, that, that was quite interesting, actually. Uh, it reminds me of uh, some of the uh, projects that we work with. Right, uh, the, so the things that you're sending up for. That, that's right. Yeah, that was all done in-house. In fact, it was done right here where you're sitting today. Really? Yeah, and we did that in five, ten minutes. It was, mm. I, I was impressed. I was amazed by how quick you could do yeah. that. Yeah, no, quite quite interesting. I must I must yeah. say. I mean, that's why that's that's the real reason why we we have an expert from all the major software houses that come in to show us how to do these things. They obviously know the software the best. Mm -hmm. You know, and if we work with Microsoft, we have an expert from Microsoft. To work with Lotus, expert from Lotus. Oh, I see. Word so they participate in, in the production. Yeah, oh, and you know they, they know the right questions to to um, cover because they have people calling in and uh, you know asking those questions of them themselves. Yeah. It's, uh, so w w what is this here then? Okay, well, you're just looking at the, um, the chapters that you'll see in, in the three hours, and um, you might have noticed um, that you can go to particular chapters. And oh, th these are the headings that we saw on the, uh, on the tape. Oh, yes, you have, a, you have an on-screen clock, you know, that you see that, it on the screen, right. and you that's can right. actually just fast-forward to the, the section you want to find out about. Oh, that's quite good. So you, you don't sort of go through it from beginning to end? You, you no, just, just determine what chapter you want to read, and it tells you how long it goes for. Very easy way and very comfortable way to learn. Look, you'll know... Let me just, let me just show you something. You probably recognise one of these. <laughs> Look familiar? We uh, got a couple of yards of those, yes. So I've, uh, I must admit, though, I haven't read them, and I don't think anyone else had any. Well, we've got Norman, oh. our, our computer wizard. Oh, yes. he, he's probably gone through but not even him would have gone through it in the proper way. Mm. You know, video is such, a, it's such a, a great way to learn, and it's also yeah. a very enjoyable way to learn. In mm -hmm. fact, I've got to show you one thing. We did uh, Windows 3.1, and we had a lot of fun with the multimedia. Let's, let's, let me right. show you that. I think you'll okay. like this. Ever since my baby left me, oh my goodness, I found a new place to dwell. Don't give up, don't, don't give up your <laughs> don't day job. Don't give up your day job. Let's hit the stop button and <laughs> put the microphone down. Best, best left there. I think so. Let's click on the play button and see what happens. Uh -huh. Ever since my baby left me, that's me. I found a new place. To Viewers, dwell. please don't turn off. <laughs> don't turn off. Do not adjust your TV sets. <laughs> but notice, notice how I had the frequency going in this little window as I played it, and that's actually created a wave file for me. If I was to oh. save my voice, which I probably will, of course, and I'll distribute. It, uh, <laughs> distribute it nationally afterwards. Um, any talent scouts that might be out there. It saved it as a WAV file, WAV, and we've uh -huh. seen WAV files already. And in fact, if we go up to the uh, file menu in the sound recorder and just go to file open, 
and we say no to save the changes there. And you see a list of all the sounds that we had before. So for example, if we go down and choose one of the favorites that we had earlier on, click on OK. And uh, let's have a listen to this one. Read my lips. Okay. Oh, yes, I remember so that one. So you can one. bring in another WAV file, and you can actually see the frequency there uh, uh -huh. on the screen. And if you've got a few of Well, that was me. <laughs> well, very good. I'm very impressed. Do you think I'll make it as a singer? Absolutely not. Oh, don't give up your day job, in other words. <laughs> but that was a multimedia part of Windows 3.1. We had a lot of fun doing that, and I, I think you'll agree it was a, a great way to learn some of those new concepts that we see in, in, in computing now. Well, uh, uh, absolutely. No, I, I must impre admit, I, I am impressed. It, it, it looks very good. Um, but hand on heart, Stephen, I yes. mean, if this is half as good as you mm. say, and if your other productions stand up to the same quality, why don't I know about it? Right. Why haven't anyone talked sure. to me about it? I, I thought you'd ask a question. The, the, the whole concept started in Sweden a couple of years ago, and now it's tremendously successful in the Scandinavian countries. And we're now bringing it to the UK and to Europe. In fact, I'm going to be one of the people that's setting it up in the UK. And we plan to have offices, offices in Germany and France fairly soon as well. well I see. So it, it's a pan-European launch, yes. basically. Yes, it is, and expanding at a quite a rate. Right. So how many programs do you have now? Oh, we have them all. We have uh, all the major software applications covered. So you cover all the, the important software companies? Oh, yes. Microsoft, Aldis, WordPerfect. They're all there. Right. And they're all produced by, by yourselves or yes. Sufficient? With, with the expert from those companies. Someone from Microsoft, someone from Lotus. And so they always participate in... in oh, yes. That's, that's our concept. Always have the expert. You're getting the right person when you see it. So is it expensive? No, it's about, uh, about the same price as having an expert, uh, a software expert coming in for an hour to show you how to do it yourself. So... By £100? You get, that for, you get that for life, though, don't you? Yeah, well, that's true. Well, it's very, very, very interesting. But um, tell me, Stephen. Yeah. I can hear that you're not Scandinavian. Well, no, far from it, in fact. I'm actually, have a guess, I'm Australian. Did you, was it obvious? <laughs> well, you could have fooled me. No. In fact, I must come, cl I must come clean at this point. I actually um, formally work for Microsoft. I've, I've worked for Microsoft for the last three years, uh, and I started in Sydney for two years. And mm -hmm. for the last year, I've been working in the UK, actually, in the training centre for Microsoft. Oh, so I see. I've been teaching people how to use these products. Oh, I see. But uh, I, came to, I came to the studio to do a soft vision video, and uh, the concept was great. And now here I am working for them. Oh, terrific. So you were actually one of the program experts in, in another I was. production. Oh, I see. Well, and now I sit down with the program experts and we go through and produce the videos. Good. Well, I have to come clean with you as well because... Yeah, uh, so I, I gathered you've got a bit of an accent <laughs> there as well. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm from Scandinavia, but uh, I was not part of the setup of, of Soft Vision, mm -hmm. I hate to say, because uh, that, that would have been exciting. Right. But uh, I have seen the Soft Vision products before and... Uh, I've been suitably impressed, and uh, that's why I've taken the responsibility of uh, taking Soft International. Right. And I work as uh, chairman of, of the company, and uh, you and I are going to work together to service the European market. Well, we certainly are. You're obviously impressed by the concept as well. I am, absolutely. Well, great. Well, I think that all, all that remains for me to say, really, is that if you want to obtain a, a, a Soft learning video, and I know you will, uh, you can contact Soft directly or any of the leading software suppliers. Great. Well, until next time, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I'm Stephen Berry, and Lars, I'm going to show you that multimedia part in Windows because that was so much fun. Let's have yeah. another look at that. Yeah. No, that was really good.